we have gone after four peer competitors and we weren't really prepared for most of them, at least when the competition really became dangerous. How do you convince someone today and in the next 10 years or so that uh, the rise of China and its access to energy is such an important problem for the United States that you should continue to allocate resources at something like the current level, let alone how to allocate them. I agree with you that when we went after Imperial Germany, uh, I agree with you that when we went after Imperial Germany, uh, Imperial Japan and Nazi Germany, we, we were not prepared. Uh, and let me say a few words about that. Uh, we went to war against Germany in April 1917. Uh, the war, of course, started on August 1st, 1914. We went in in 1917, and then the war ends November 11th, 1918. And the AEF was really kind of a total mess because uh, we weren't prepared. We had to use European equipment, and very, very messy. Uh, and in World War II, uh, we went into that war with a very small military, and took an enormous effort to build it up after December 7th, 1941, and get ready to fight. Uh, I believe there are two reasons for that that are worth talking about. One is just our history of isolationism. The United States, until World War I, had not engaged in a European war. Right? It was the first time we actually projected uh, power across the Atlantic Ocean when we sent the AEF. And then, of course, as you know, when the war ended, when World War I ended, we went back to being an isolationist country in the 20s and 30s, right? which is in good part why we weren't prepared for World War II. So there was a very powerful isolationist impulse in the country. And then the second reason is the United States has historically relied on local powers in the region to check the potential hegemon. The reason we didn't enter the war in 1914 is we were counting on the Triple Entente Russia, France, and Britain to do the heavy lifting against Imperial Germany. But what happened is the French army mutinied in the spring of 1917. The Russians got knocked out of the war in the fall of 1917. Right? I have a lecture I could give that would, I think, convince you that if we had not entered World War I, the Germans would have won. They came within a hair of winning it anyway. Right? We were buck passing to the Europeans, to the Triple Entente, and that is why we didn't get geared up to fight the war. Same thing is true with regard to World War II. Right? We were counting on the Soviet Union, the French, and the British to check Adolf Hitler. The most important event in, 19, in, in World War II for the United States was the fall of France. Right? The fall of France had a stunning effect on the United States. Most people think it's Pearl Harbor that turned us around. It's the fall of France in 1940. France was knocked out of the war. Britain was pushed off the beaches at Dunkirk. And that meant that the Wehrmacht had a one-on-one -on -one shot against the Red Army, which had performed poorly in Finland, right? had suffered greatly from the purges. And most people thought that the Soviet Union, the Red Army, was going to go down. And Hitler was going to end up conquering all of Europe. Right? And it was the buck-passing strategy failed. So what I'm saying to you is that the Americans were unprepared, one, because of the isolationist impulse, and two, because of buck passing. Then comes the Soviet Union and the Cold War. There's nobody to buck pass to. The reason that we stay in Europe and we do the heavy lifting of deterring the Soviet Union in Europe in the Cold War and in Asia as well is who are you going to pass the buck to? Japan? You just destroyed Japan. Germany? It's cut in half and destroyed. The French, they got knocked out of World War II. They can't do the job. The British can't do the job. So we had to do it. This is where the isolationist impulse gets taken off the table, number one, and this is where buck passing is no longer possible. Okay? So you see, the Cold War is very different than World War II, World War I. Right? Now, today, you talk about a potential peer competitor. Isolationist impulse? Are you kidding? The United States thinks it has a right to run the world. Right? We not only think we have a right to run the world, we think we have a responsibility to run the world. Right? And furthermore, Buck passing is not in the story anymore. I wish it were. Right? We think it's our job to go deal with every problem on the planet militarily instead of getting others to do the dirty work or the heavy lifting, however you want to put it. So as China rises today, 
We were living in a very different world than was the case before World War I, case before World War II, and even in the Cold War. We'll have no trouble, right? We'll have no trouble uh, adjusting to a Chinese threat. The real problem with China is that it's just so, so big, right? This is a country that has four times the population of the United States, maybe more than four times. If it has a per capita GNP that looks anything like South Korea or Hong Kong, this is a country that's going to have much more power than the United States. And we're going to be dealing with them 8,000 miles away from the American homeland. Uh, Soviet threat will be Trump change compared to that threat. I mean, it could be really wicked. 